So this place is gonna look like this until November? Yeah. Man, there's no room service in this place. This November. is clean. Out there on the bike is dirty. It's out uh, but where is it? Don't they have like in a hotel, you know, they have like a cleaning crew and they knock on your door at 8 a.m.? <laughs> Twice a week. In Oxnard, most people speak Spanish. How do you uh, blend in in the neighborhood? I don't blend in, but uh, it's something I'm learning. I've been practicing my Spanish. I learned Spanish by watching the soap operas. You could be in a soap opera. Did anyone tell you that? You should be an actor in a telenovela. Please, uh, hook me up, Billy. Oh, he, he has the socks in him. <laughs> the socks moves in him that... Uh, that very re him rico suave, huh? Yeah, very rico suave. Got the nice moves. I'm not really trying to blend in wearing my purple pimp suit. <laughs> rico. <laughs> Alright Mark, let's go to the ring, we'll make it happen. How did you end up a boxing reporter? Well one day a friend of mine who's a big businessman from the Philippines told me there's this guy named Manny Pacquiao in Los Angeles, you have to interview him. And I'm like, I'm busy, I have other things going on, I never heard of this guy, Pacquiao, who I heard of Tyson, I heard of Holyfield, never heard of Pacquiao. And he goes, no, this guy, when I fly to the Philippines and they mention his name on the plane, the whole plane goes crazy. And if he wins, the whole country. So I'm like, okay, let me go interview him. Interviewed Pacquiao overnight without knowing anything about boxing, without knowing Pacquiao. That video got almost 400,000 hits. Wow. So I'm like, okay, let me start covering this guy. And that's how it started about four years ago. So four years ago. And before that, you were involved in the NBA? Just basketball. Basketball, basketball, basketball. And how did you get involved in basketball? I used to play in college, and my friends tried out for the NBA, and I went with them to the tryouts, but I wasn't trying out, I was just sitting on the sideline talking smack, like I always do, like saying funny comments, and the NBA players were answering me back, like, what's wrong with you, who's this crazy guy? And I wrote an article about it, sent it out to different newspapers. Yeah. Some newspapers wrote me back, said, don't ever write us anything again, that was the worst pitch we ever heard. <laughs> I kept that fax, actually. And one newspaper, a small paper, said, we like it, it's different. And that's yeah. how it started, that was in 1997. So, despite the setbacks, why did you continue to keep doing it? Because I was having fun with it, because nobody else was doing it. When I'm looking at other people's coverage and stuff, I'm like, I can't believe they get to interview these legends. This is what they're asking. I would have asked this, or I would have made a better situation. How, how did you not take it personally when you got rejected? Because I don't care. Because this is where I grew up. We were in a city that had 87 families in the middle of nowhere. You don't care what people say. Where was this? In Israel, in a city called Ephrath. Tiny little, near Jerusalem, tiny little place. How old were you when you came to America? 22, right after the army. Yeah, so you were in the army too? Best time of my life. Yeah, secret service? No, they wouldn't take me. Did you shoot anyone? I shot in the air once, I got in trouble <laughs> for it, by mistake. <laughs> Within five minutes, ambulances, police, tabs, they all thought it was a terror attack. It was just me. I was cleaning my gun and a bullet went off in the middle of the street. So probably best you're not in the army anymore. Yeah, although I like the uniform and all the special pins and everything. It's, it's like, the accessories were cool. Yeah. Are basketball players or boxers friendlier? No, boxers are way friendlier. Yeah? I've never met a drink. Even the boxer with the worst reputation, he's the nicest guy. Mayweather's cool, his family's cool. I haven't met a bad boxer. Uh, basketball, you have some drinks. You have some people that have an image, like in the media, that the most amazing people. But when you meet them, it's like, oh, it's, all, it's all a facade. So, because you're always going around and you're always sneaking into gyms, now that people know who you are, is it a different response? 99% of the gyms, they welcome me with the open arms, come in, and the last thing I hear before I leave is when are you coming back. With covering other sports, it's much more corporate. Talk to my manager, talk to my lawyer, talk to my lawyer and my manager and my agent, and let's schedule something for next Friday. I go to a basketball player, he lives five hours away. I'm four and a half hours into the drive. Sorry, Ellie, my girlfriend just came over, let's do it tomorrow. We, in boxing, you don't have that. If a fighter says it, they does, he does it, whether it's MMA or boxing. They appreciate it. Yeah. They, they love the camera, they need the exposure, they're not a national TV like other athletes, but it's better for me, it's easier for me. Tell me, as you've gotten big time, do you find you've got more jealousy and more haters? Of course. It comes with the territory, and sometimes the fighters afterwards, like, I'll do my interview, I'll walk away, and then the other reporters will all say like bad things, but then the fighter will be like, no, he's cool. So everybody, oh yeah, he yeah. is cool. But they try to throw that at the fighters, but the fighters have been cool with me, and. I, I'm thankful that they have my back, even trainers. It doesn't bother you? No, I welcome it. The but haters are the first ones to watch my video. How do you think I'm getting all the traffic? All the people say that they want to hate me and do stuff, but that's okay. It, you never get positive comments on YouTube or any video, do you? Here's no one thing. does. Statistically, 80% of people who comment, they're negative comments. But I welcome everything. But Keep they're watching, watching your videos. Exactly. 
And, and with time, they start liking it and they get into it. And many people tell me, we hated you in the beginning and we thought you were a douchebag and we thought you were a jerk and an ass. And, blah, blah. and now it's like, wow, that was actually a good interview. Great guest. How do you find these people? And we love boxing. and blah, blah. So it takes time. But if you give like, anyone who's a little different than the average, mm. love them or hate them, but with time, as long as they watch. But for people out there that want to follow their dream and they've got something they want to do but they're too self-conscious, how do you deal with it? How do you not bother? What's the tip? The tip is don't worry what anybody says. Do the best job you can. You have to differentiate between legitimate criticism, like Ellie, your lighting is off, your mic is bad. Half the time I don't have a microphone, this is my camera. So I get that criticism, they're right. But if I had a camera and a mic, I would be so tired I couldn't do my interviews. Then other people who complain, oh, your questions are stupid, you don't know what you're talking about. My questions are original, not stupid. There's a difference. There is no stupid question, except the one you don't ask. Now, you're making your living doing what you love. What's next? What's your next milestone? Keep doing it. And it, it, right now, it has a life of its own. When I wake up every week and I look at YouTube, I've gone from 3 million hits, I'm up to 45 million, and by next week, I'll be at 50. So I'm just riding, surfing it. You go surfing, you know, the wave goes, you yeah, just take course. the wave until it crashes, and then we get another wave. So what's your special message for all the people out there that post negative comments? Uh, keep doing it. Keep watching. When they stop watching, when you stop watching, then I'll stop worrying. So until then, just keep hating. And if you come up with a real original hate thing, I'll send you a t-shirt or a hat, but it has to be original. <laughs> it's Gabby. Gabby now, is a world champion, and he just hit me and I survived. <laughs> Him and his brother, both incredible boxers. Now, any last words for people out there, fans, critics? This is the thing. If you love what you're doing and really love it, go for it. Don't listen to anybody. Be realistic. If, if you're just starting, keep your day job. Don't quit everything to go for something. Start it gradually. Build it up. If you're passionate about boxing, start a blog. You love basketball, you don't have to cover the Lakers to write about the sport. You can sit at home, you can do a YouTube channel with your comments, you can open up a Facebook. If you're good, people will come. You don't have to go think, oh, I have no chance, it's just me against the networks. In this day and age, the way technology is, anyone could do it. It's just so how you're bad a, you want it. You're a rags to riches social media story. Um, rags to like clean rags, <laughs> but we'll get to the riches. But the blueprint's being laid out by Ellie Secback. That's it. And then in this gym, I have to watch my back because everybody has peripheral vision. Now, now, uh, <laughs> yeah, quick. Uh, of course. Now, now this is this is my favorite part. Mark Demori, reporting. Ellie Secback, reporting. Ellie Secback, good morning. <laughs>